You might remember Google whistleblower Zach Vorhe. Well, folks, he's here with us again, and he has a new book out about Google censorship and how this really works. Now, Zach Vorhe is with Project Veritas now, touring around, doing some great work, and Zach, great having you with Crossroads. Josh, thank you for having me back. So, what, what's your new book? It's Google Leaks, a Whistleblower's Expose of Big Tech Censorship. Yeah, so it's the backstory on how I blew the whistle uh, on Google, on the world's most dangerous, totalitarian, globalist corporation. Um, and really, it goes in depth on some of the stories that I really weren't appropriate for, you know, uh, you know quick sound bites, you know, the top level stuff. Yeah, yeah, you, um, you, you get to the meat of it. In the other meat words, yeah. of it. Like, how Google rewrote their news algorithms to specifically go after Trump. Why don't we start with that? Tell, tell us how that works. Yeah, so um, Google's got a bunch of different projects, and there's a bunch of slides right here, like real-time boost. So these are their actual slides? These are actual slides from the company itself. Let's just turn the page. So um, what, what, is, what is this? This is their scoring, and this is called real-time hive mind scoring. Hive mind. They, huh? they, li they literally called it hive mind, <laughs> right? And, and get this, their main computer cluster is called the Borg cluster, right? A little job you write on this called a Borglet. So ex explain to readers who didn't watch Star Trek what that means, right? So th the Borg cluster is Google's internal name for their system of computers that they use to run all of their mass computing things, like when they crunch the world's internet websites to perform their search index you know, Google search, they use the Borg cluster. And so this hmm. runs on the Borg cluster. It's called the real-time hive mind scoring system. And they literally built it, as you can see here, on, they rewrote it according to the fight that Trump was having with Comey. With so the they, they built it around Trump's fight with Comey. Yes. Wow. And so that was when Comey had his memo and all these things, and he was trying to, of course, go after Trump, and that was part of the whole Trump-Russia thing and all that. And uh, they were trying to say that Trump was trying to end the Russia investigation, and that, that was the whole scandal. So they built it during that time. Yes, right. And they also built this like clustering mechanism where they could uh, figure out how, through the use of trigger words and keywords and phrases, in order to make one story be a continuation of the previous day's story. Wait a second. So, I mean, people kind of suspect this is happening, that certain keywords trigger things within the algorithm. That is actually happening then? That's actually happening. They, they actually have that. They show like a graph, a tree, and they say, actually, this forms a super story that spans eight days. And so with the Trump Comey thing, they're able to keep the stories boosted all the way at the top because the algorithm was able to fold a new story into the stories that were proceeding in the last five days. Now, I know a lot of people would look at that and say, well, it not that just to make the bigger stories more prominent because it's just better for you know business and people are looking for the story, or is there something deeper to it? I mean, it's not for increasing market share in the United States because their competitors are now having exponential growth. Like DuckDuckGo has had exponential growth, and so people are clearly sick and tired of Google's censorship and the rigging of their search results. And the rigging of the search results comes from stuff like this, uh, the real-time events, their, um, the way that they allowed the mainstream media to structure their stories so that they could remain at the top of their search index, of their news index. I see. So that whenever, you ever remember that time where you could type in like any three number word and then like you know COVID yeah. cases well, you, you go back to like 2010 epic times uh, was actually on Google we were like oftentimes top 10 search results with any news story yes yeah and, and the, the, we of course got taken out from that we don't know the algorithm for it but we got I can taken tell you out the algorithm that. for that do you want to know yeah yeah tell me it's called the eat score it's called expertise authoritativeness and trustworthiness it goes into your page rank score which Google um, assigns each website, and they won't tell you what your page rank score is. In fact, there's been congressional subpoenas to ask what the page rank score is, and Google will simply not give it up. And, and this is ideological, or do they use other mechanisms? It is for ideological, this? and here's why they base the score off of what the mainstream media says and also what Wikipedia says. I see. Right? Now, yeah. the problem with Wikipedia is that they've gone from using primary sources to using secondary sources that describe the primary sources. And media. So, 
In other, in other words, media organizations are controlling the entire system. They're, yeah, so when you get a negative story, your website will likely face a penalty in the next three to six months. And so it's really important for businesses out there, if they get hit, they get slandered, to go force a retraction, because if they don't, it's going to end up on Wikipedia, and then this defamation laundering engine, known as Wikipedia, will cause their uh, search ranking on Google to go down. Defamation laundering engine, I like that. Yeah. And, and, and it's how it works. We, we've seen it with Epic Times where we get hit pieces on us. And it's interesting to watch because if you read the comments on the hit pieces, it's like people just insult the people who wrote them. Yeah. It's like it, the, uh, you have the grassroots that normal people obviously don't like believe it or go along with it. But then we start seeing our business get hit because the other institutions start targeting us using those stories. And so this is actually part of the system though. Like this is like the technical technology side of how this actually works is what you're saying. Yeah, and the thing is is that before where the uh, page rank score used to change very slowly, like the criteria was incrementally updated without that many changes from quarter to quarter, now the changes are coming much more rapidly. And that's because the um, authoritativeness is changing so rapidly. So for example, um, if you cite the WHO uh, and Dr. Fauci from a year ago, uh, today that's going to be misinformation. Right, like masks don't work, da, da da da. That's now considered misinformation, but that's what Dr. Fauci was saying back in March of 2020. And mm -hmm. so now that we have this rapid changing of the narrative pretty much every month now, um, they need to have an automated way which they can sort of shift the definition of truth and then re rank all the different news articles based on that. Well, and I think this brings up a bigger picture then of how these algorithms actually work and how, how they're being written with the intention of this. I mean, is this being done intentionally, would you say, with an ideological or political goal? It has to be because when Google went IPO, they had a constitution and they made a promise to their stockholders, to the world, and what they said was that they were going to be politically neutral. Their exact words were, don't be evil, and then the second one was, organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Very specific. And for them to just turn on a dime when the wrong presidential candidate got elected to office through a democratic process shows that they, they're, 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 that's a, it's a, the only reason why they would change is because it's political in my opinion. Interesting. Now I want to go into your story a bit because you were of course working at Google Tell us where, which part of Google you were working in and kind of what you were seeing develop over time as you were working there. So for the first five and a half years, I worked on the Google Earth project. Uh, and then I worked for YouTube, uh, working on their game consoles to bring YouTube to the Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PlayStation 4. So if you ever see YouTube on one of those consoles, like I worked on that. Um, I didn't actually work on the fake news team, but Google has a transparent structure internally, unlike something like Apple, which is siloed like the CIA. And so as a full-time employee, I could just do a search, look at the fake news team, and see what they were working on. Oh, wow. And so that's what I did because in 2016, you may remember that there was this meeting, this all-hands meeting, and then um, the CEO admitted that they were using machine learning to censor fake news in the 2016 election. So I just went, well, what's the fake news team up to? So you wanted to see how they were defining fake news, in other words. So I did that. I looked at the fake news team. I saw what they were doing. I saw their design documents. That led to other documents. And then every single time I saw this document, I was like, this is so out of normal expectations that I should just download this, you know, because they're eventually going to realize how evil it is. And they're going to they're <laughs> going to lock it down. And so uh, I just started I just started downloading all the documents I, ca I could, similar to like Edward Snowden. Yeah, yeah. So and so and so, what were some of the documents you were seeing? Like, explain to us what what, what did you see in them that you that was of concern to you? Once I found the fake news documents, um, I realized that the fake news examples that they were using all like three out of five had to do with Hillary Clinton. So I started to get this like inkling that it really wasn't about censoring the fake news. It was about putting the thumb on the election scales. And so I, I realized, well, okay, well, if this is about the election, then, and we're censoring the fake news, then there's gotta be a system that censors the fake news. You can't just define what fake news is, you gotta have a thing that re-ranks it. So, yeah, so in other words, it was a way of, a way of 
using the label of fake news in order to target legitimate reporting that they just didn't agree with politically. Right. And, you know, of course, being a tech company, Google, it's, you know, especially, um, that also meant creating an algorithm that could work to define fake news and do this automatically. Right. And I did find that algorithm, and it wasn't called Project Dragonfly. Everyone's like, ooh, this Pro Project Dragonfly is so evil. There's no evidence of Project Dragonfly I've ever seen, and I look for it. But when I found the real censorship engine, I knew immediately from the name that this was it. And the name of it was Machine Learning Fairness. Machine learning fairness is critical race theory combined with algorithmic re-ranking and classification of data on the internet.